Hey everyone, it's Wise, and for today's video, I've decided to answer a question a lot of people kept asking me. And that question is, how do you read Rick Riordan's books? If you haven't noticed, I've mentioned Rick Riordan a lot throughout my videos, and I've been a fan of his books. So, as a fan, I'm going to give you a guide on how I would read his books. But before we get into it, I have to say that I'm going to be specifically talking about how to read his mythology-based books. Not the Rick Riordan Presents books, but the following series. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Heroes of Olympus, Charles of Apollo, The King Chronicles, and the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series. I'm saying this because Rick Riordan has published a lot of books, from middle school books to adult books, and around 2016, he even got a Rick Riordan Presents imprint which features other authors writing their own books based on different mythologies. So overall, his name was placed on a lot of books, but I'm just going to be talking about the series I just mentioned earlier, which focuses on one world. Also, I have to mention that this video is talking about the books he wrote to date, and it will not cover his future books because, as of now, they haven't been released yet. So with all this in mind, let's get started. If you are an absolute beginner when it comes to Rick Riordan's books, I would suggest that you read the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This was the first series Rick has ever wrote for this world, and this was the series that started it all. I highly recommend that you start with this because the characters that appear in this book makes cameos and appearances in the later books, and this gives you a formal introduction to the world Rick made. If you want to get into the Heroes of Olympus series first, by all means you can do what you want, but I would not recommend that because you wouldn't know the backstory of Percy, Annabeth, Nico, Thalia, Camp Hapblood, and a lot more characters and places that are mentioned in the Heroes of Olympus. Even if I think that Heroes of Olympus can stand as its own series, and it doesn't really rely that much on the Percy Jackson books, I would still urge you to read Percy Jackson before Heroes of Olympus, because personally, I feel more attached to Percy and the rest because I read Percy Jackson and the Olympians before Heroes of Olympus. So once you're finished with Percy Jackson, there are two book series you could read next. The Heroes of Olympus series, which happens months after the events of the Percy Jackson series, and you can also read the King Chronicles. To be honest, I haven't actually read the King Chronicles yet, but they are definitely in my TBR. If I were you in your shoes, however, I would go to the Heroes of Olympus series. I'm choosing this over the King Chronicles because it connects more at Percy's world, mainly because it deals with the same mythology Percy Jackson has, which is obviously Greek mythology, whereas the King Chronicles revolves around Egyptian mythology. Also, the King Chronicles have a new cast of characters, places, terms, and villains that has almost nothing to do with Percy Jackson or the Greek gods. So whether you decide to read the King Chronicles or the Heroes of Olympus, it's just basically your decision. So let's say you went with my suggestion and you just finished the Heroes of Olympus. In chronological order, you would have to read the Trials of Apollo next because the Trials of Apollo takes place roughly 6 months after the last Heroes of Olympus book, The Blood of Olympus. But I wouldn't suggest that. Instead, I would want you to pick up the King Chronicles. Like I said earlier, I haven't read these books yet, but I've heard a lot of people say that these books were amazing and that it deserves more appreciation because it's getting overshadowed by Percy Jackson. I want you to read these first because these books were published at the same time as Heroes of Olympus, and they actually take place between the Battle of the Labyrinth and the Last Olympian. Also, there are a couple of short stories in the King Chronicles with Percy Jackson crossovers, and I really think you would enjoy it. So once you're done with the King Chronicles, I would recommend reading the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series. I read the series just about two months ago, and I absolutely loved them. It focuses around Norse mythology, and the main character is Magnus Chase, who was a demigod son of the Norse god Frey, and is also the cousin of Annabeth Chase. These books have the same witty and sassy humor that Percy has, and like Percy Jackson, the chapter titles are hilarious. I mean, chapter 1 is named, Good Morning, You're Going to Die. And there's this other chapter that says, Hearthstone passes out even more than Jason Grace, though I have no idea who that is. This of course refers to Jason Grace fainting a lot throughout the Heroes of Olympus series, and you wouldn't get that if you haven't read the Heroes of Olympus before Magnus Chase. Annabeth and Percy do make an appearance in the last book of the series, and this series is sort of linked with the Trials of Apollo, because while Magnus is out in his quest to defeat Loki, the events of the Trials of Apollo are happening. So after you read Magnus Chase, that's the time you can read the Trials of Apollo. I've already read this series and just finished it last month, and I have to say, I cried after reading Tower of Nero. 
The ending made me quite emotional because the characters from the Heroes of Olympus and Percy Jackson have grown so much over the course of so many books. Obviously, I'm not going to say in detail because of a lot of spoilers, and I'm saving my thoughts and opinions on that book for another video. So going back, The Trials of Apollo gives you a refresher on what happened after the Blood of Olympus, and the reason why I want you to read this last is because this is Rick Riordan's most recent series, and it might be the last Percy Jackson related series Rick would ever write. It's not a confirmed if Trials of Apollo was the last Percy Jackson series we will ever get though, but so far, it might be. The Trials of Apollo also goes back to the characters from the Heroes of Olympus and Percy Jackson, and if you have not read either Heroes of Olympus or Percy Jackson, and you just jumped right into Trials of Apollo, then I don't think you would get or understand anything that's happening. And that's why I recommend you to read it this way. So that's how I would read Rick Riordan's books. Once again, you can read them in any order you like, but if I were going to read these books all over again from the start, this is how I would read them. How about you? What's your favorite Rick Riordan book? Let me know in the comments down below.